We have finally made it to the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. This is section 4.4. .4. So up to this point, we have been finding the area under a curve, either using the definition of a limit or geometric formulas. And obviously, that's not something we want to continue. So we are going to use the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. And what it does is it connects the concept of an antiderivative with the area under a curve. So I have it written in a different color here for you. F is a continuous um, function on the closed interval AB, and capital F is an antiderivative of F on the interval AB. So if I want to find the area under a curve in the interval from A to B, all I have to do is take the antiderivative and then evaluate it at the lower and upper limits. So let's just recall before we actually use the fundamental theorem of calculus, let's recall what this area was using a geometric formula. So we said this was obviously a triangle and the base was three and the height was six. And so we took one half times three times six to get an area of nine. So we know that the answer is nine. Let's take a look at how we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus for this. And pay attention also to the notation that we're going to use. So notice I'm integrating. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2x and I'm going to integrate 2x with respect to x. So remember, this is just that power rule. We're saying, okay, we've got our 2. And this is going to be x would turn into x squared over 2. And because this is a definite integral, I don't need to use plus C. And that will make sense in just a second. So for now, I'm going to put plus C just so that you understand that, you know, that's typically what we would do when we um, take the integral. But now I'm going to integrate from 0 to 3. So you can either draw this line like this. Uh, some people draw it using um, brackets and then 0 to 3. I tend to just like the line 0 to 3. Now what this is saying is I'm going to evaluate it at the upper limit. So obviously this is just going to turn into x squared. And again, we'll discuss the c in a moment. But essentially we're saying let's take this, which is f of x, capital F of x is equal to x squared plus c. Let's evaluate it at b. So we're going to take 3 squared Oh, I'll go ahead and put the plus C for now so that you can understand why we don't need to put plus C. And then I'm going to subtract and I'm going to plug in A. So A is zero. So that's zero squared plus C. So here's why we don't need the C because I've got a plus C here and then I've got a minus C here. So the C's are going to end up canceling and that's why we're never going to use the C. So what do I have? I just have three squared, which is nine minus zero. So my solution is nine. Notice we got the same thing using the fundamental theorem of calculus as we did using the area of a triangle. Let's go through this question together. And again, this obviously is a curved function, so I could not check this with a geometric formula. I could use that definition of a limit, uh, but we're not going to. We're just going to go straight to the fundamental theorem of calculus. So this tells me that I'm looking at the function y equals 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2. And it's bound by x equals 2 and x equals 8 and the x-axis. So that means when I'm integrating, 2 and 8 are my limits of integration. My function, 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2, and all of it with respect to x. So notice I'm using the parentheses there. And now I'm going to get to work. So this tells me I need to find the antiderivative, or I need to integrate. Integrating 2x cubed gives me 2 times x to the fourth over 4. So I'm going to just go ahead and go straight to x to the fourth over 2. So you don't have to show the 2 out front and that you reduced. You can just go straight to the result. And so here is my antiderivative. And again, I don't need to use plus c. I'm going to now integrate from 2 to 8. So that tells me that I'm going to start with 8. So I'm going to plug in 8, so 8 to the 4th, and then divide it by 2. 
so that's 2048. And then 8 to the third and divided by 3, that's 512 divided by 3. I encourage you not to turn those into decimals. Uh, and then plus 2 times 8, which is 16. And then I'm going to do the same thing. And notice that I've put the first set of terms in parentheses. And then I'm going to do the same for the second, because this is a very common mistake, is students will correctly put the minus here, but then they won't put the parentheses, and they will end up messing up a sign from whatever the second expression is. So let's use 2. 2 to the 4th divided by 2 gives me 8. 2 to the 3rd divided by 3 gives me 8 thirds. And 2 times 2, which is 4. Now, again, because I want to be as exact as possible, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the 2048, the plus 16, the minus 8, and the minus 4. Again, that's a minus 4. And that's going to give me 2052. And then I'm going to combine the terms that have been um, divided by 3. So negative 512 over 3, and then a negative negative 8 thirds, so I'm adding 8 thirds. That gives me 504 over 3. And if you'll notice, 504 divided by 3 actually turns into 168. And then if I subtract those, I get 1,884, and that is the area under the curve. I'm a big fan of letting technology help us, or in this case, check our work. So I want to show you quickly how to do this on a TI-84. Obviously, this isn't going to show you any of the steps in between, but it is a great way to check your solution. So I have our previous answer up there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to math, and then I want to choose nine, which is function integration. So I can either arrow down or just click the nine. And notice that it displays quite well for me. Now, if you have an older one, I have included um, how you would enter that. I'm going to go ahead and enter it exactly the way it looks. So this is 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2, and then with respect to x. So obviously I have a kind of a nicer calculator, and so I'm able to enter it just like that. So if you don't, then you're still going to choose math 9, um, but you're going to then put the function, which is the 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2, and then the variable of integration, which is x, and then the lower limit, which is 2, and the upper limit, which is 8. And then when I press enter, Notice it gives me the exact same solution that we found when we did it by hand. We now have a really great way to integrate, but remember that we're not always going to have just very straightforward questions. So here's one with an absolute value where we're going to have to be smarter than our calculators. When we have a, a, an absolute value function, what we essentially have is we have some function happening here on the left side and then we have some function happening here on the right side. So this is our function, x minus 1, and it's the absolute value. That means this actually is y equals x minus 1. And we can see that if I continued this down, this would go all the way down to 1 down here, or sorry, negative 1 down here, and it would have a slope of 1. So I feel comfortable with the right side of my equation being y equals x minus 1. But what's happening on the left side? Because obviously this is a negative slope and it's going through a positive one. So if you'll recall when we're dealing with absolute value, we tend to take the negative of the function is less than or equal to the value is less than or equal to the positive of the function. Whoops. So that's where the x minus 1 is coming from. But now let's simplify the left side. That's negative x plus 1. That's what this function is going to be. So when I'm finding the area, I need to break it into two integrals. So I'm going to say that the integral from 0 to 2 of the absolute value of x minus 1 dx is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of negative x plus 1 dx plus the integral from 1 to 2 of positive x minus 1 dx. 
So notice this works because this one went from 0 to 1, and this one went from 1 to 2. So in total, I am integrating from 0 to 2. So I'm integrating the entire area that we need to integrate, but I'm also taking into account the different behavior of the function. So let's go ahead and integrate. If I'm integrating negative x plus 1, that's going to give me negative x squared over 2 plus x from 0 to 1. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. This would be positive x squared over 2 minus x and integrated from 1 to 2. So on the left, I have negative 1 squared over 2 plus 1 and then minus 0 squared plus 0. And then over here, I have 2, so I'm starting with the 2. 2 squared is 4, divided by 2 is 2, minus 2, and then minus 1 squared over 2 minus 1. So let's simplify a little bit. I'm going to, again, use that same strategy where I'm not going to integrate the 1 halves yet. So I'm just going to have negative 1 half plus 1. This is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. Then I have minus 1 half, and then I have plus 1. So what's my total area? I've got a negative 1 half and a negative 1 half, which is 1, negative 1. And then I've got plus 1, plus 1. So I have negative 1, plus 1, plus 1. So my solution is 1. Now, this one, we could actually check this with um, geometric formula. This side would be 1 half times the base of 1 times the height of 1. And this side would be 1 half times the base of 1 times the height of 1. So 1 half plus 1 half would be 1. And that's what we got using integration. Here are three questions for you to try on your own. So I encourage you to do these by hand. Feel free to check your work with a calculator when you're done. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. For the first one, fairly straightforward. I have x cubed, which turns into x to the fourth over four. And then I have minus four, and then x would be x squared over two. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the four over two to be two x squared and I'm integrating from one to two. So now I'm going to plug in the two. So two to the fourth is 16 divided by four, which is four, minus two times two squared. So two squared is four times two is eight. And now I'm plugging in the one, one to the fourth over four. And then I'm plugging in the one to two x squared. So two times one squared, so that's minus two. So really from here, it's kind of up to you how much work you show or how you proceed. I'm going to take 4 minus 8, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify this to be negative 4. And then I'm going to simplify this, 1 fourth minus 2. Now typically, if I have more than one fraction, I wait and combine them, but obviously I, don't, I only have one fraction. So 1 fourth minus 2 is going to be negative 7 fourths, so I'm subtracting negative 7 fourths. Again, how did I do that? I turned 2 into 8 fourths because 2 and 8 fourths are equivalent. So 1 fourth minus 8 fourths is negative 7 fourths. And now I'm actually going to end up adding the 7 fourths because it was minus a negative. So again, if you want to write this as a decimal, you certainly can. It's negative 2.25 or negative 2 and 1 fourth or uh, negative 9 fourths. However you want to write that is just fine. So negative 2.25 or negative 9 fourths. All right, let's take a look at sine. So again, when we integrate sine, we're thinking, well, what gives me sine as the derivative? And that is cosine, except when I take the derivative of cosine, it actually gives me negative sine. So this has to be negative cosine of x, 0 to pi. So I'm going to plug in cosine of pi, which is 1. And then I'm going to plug in cosine of 0, which is negative 1. So it's 1 minus negative 1. 
and I end up with two. So again, could I have shown more work there? Sure, I should have. I could have shown cosine pi minus cosine of zero, um, but it's really not necessary. As long as I can see that you have found the antiderivative and that you're evaluating, and then you find the solution. For the last one, um, again, when you are integrating something like three x, uh, three square root of x. I encourage you to either write that as 3 and then x to the 1 half, or you can keep the 3 inside as well. It's kind of up to you what you do with the 3. I But definitely want to write that x as x to the 1 half instead of x uh, square root of x. So now integrating this, um, x to the 1 half is going to give me x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. So I'm going to keep that 3 out front. And it's best to simplify as much as you can before you start plugging things in. So obviously, if I divide by 3 halves, that's the same as taking 2 divided by 3, right? Multiplying by the reciprocal. And I've got a 3 out front already, so I end up with 2x to the 3 halves integrated from 1 to 4. So that's how I would simplify that. So if I lost you there, let's bring it back up here. I ended up with 3 x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. I took the 3 halves and said, let's make that 2 thirds times 3 um, x to the 3 halves, and the 3 is canceled. So that gave me 2 x to the 3 halves. Now let's plug in the 4. So 4 to the 3 halves, remember the half says take the square root, so the square root of 4 is 2. Now cube it. So 2 to the third is 8, and then times 2, that gives me 16. And then 1, so 1 to the 3 halves is just 1, times 2 is 2, so 16 minus 2 is 14. One last question for you to try, just written a little bit differently. So obviously on the last question, I gave you the integral already. Here, I just want to make sure that you know how to write the integral yourself. So press pause, try this question, then press play to see how you did. So we have the function, and we have the limits of integration of 2 and 4. So again, we're taking the integral from 2 to 4 of 3x squared minus 2x plus 2 dx. So now I'm going to integrate. So this is x squared turns into x cubed over 3, but that would cancel with the 3. So again, if you need to write 3 and then x cubed over 3 so that you understand that those are going to cancel, you certainly can. Um, but I'm also encouraging you, if you don't have to do that, don't do it. Um, negative 2, so I'm just going to subtract. And this is 2x squared over 2. So it's 2x squared over 2, and the 2s will cancel. That gives me the x squared. And then plus 2 becomes plus 2x. And we're integrating from 2 to 4. So that gives me 4 to the third, which is 64, minus 4 squared, which is 16, plus 2 times 4, which is 8. I'm subtracting 2 to the third, which is 8, minus 2 squared, which is 4, plus 2 times 2, which is 4. So simplifying each um, expression, I would get 56 minus 8, which is 48. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the mean value theorem for integrals and the average value of a function.